big problem. I have to share it with you all. I look like an American until I open my mouth. <laughs> Sorry, I have an accent. But I really don't think with an accent. I'm smart. I speak several languages, not to show off. English, yes, sir. French, oui, monsieur. Arabic, I were ustaz. Little Italian, si, senor. And some German, too, jawohl. But when people listen to that accent, they speak to me in slow motion <laughs> and very loud. I have an accent, must be stupid. And you know what's really frustrating? is that some of those people who underestimate my intelligence, their IQ is much lower than mine. Yes, my other issue is my name. You would think it's easy. It's M-A-H-A, -A, right? Nope. I am called Maharja, Mahalia, Marja. This woman, when she heard my name, she said, wait. There is no way your parents called you that. I bet you, your mom wanted to call you Mary, and, <laughs> and she was in labor, and they asked her, and she started saying, ma, ma, and they thought it's Maha. <laughs> My name is Maha, and actually, it has a great meaning. It means a special kind of deers that have beautiful eyes, and they say I had them when I was a baby. I used to live in North Carolina and close to the water and I was brought up on the Mediterranean, loved it there. And then my husband came and said, I have an offer, considering an offer with Ohio State University. I said, I hate to leave North Carolina, but Columbus is a big city and I'm a city girl. He came from the interview and he said, honey, it's not Columbus. It's a regional campus in a very cute town called Lima. And I said, you mean Lima? He said, no, no, no. Before you go, you have to understand. It's Lima, it, it's Lima, not Lima. It's Cairo, not Cairo. It's Russia, not Russia. It's Versailles, not Versailles. My heart was pounding. We moved 30 years ago. Oh, I forgot to say that. Yeah, did I say about uh, my name meaning? Okay, thank you. <laughs> so we moved 30 years ago. My husband loved his job, worked on campus with professional people. But to my bad luck, the first people that I met were really not open to diversity at all. Just to give you an example, I had this friend over and she kept on complimenting me about my taste in my furniture. I said, thank you, other than my master's, I have a degree in interior design, and we try within our budget. She said, could I see your bedroom? Lo and behold, thank you God, the bed was made that day. <laughs> the pillows were in its place, nothing on the floor, this doesn't happen often. I don't want to show you my bedroom today. And I'm opening it and very proud. And she looks and says, oh my, I thought you'd have a tent in your bedroom, honestly. Another one, oh, I forgot to, oh. <laughs> yes, so you see my bed. We invited some, a friend for dinner. And in our culture, when you have people over for dinner, you do buko food, see the food. And she really was so surprised. The table is nice, tablecloth is great, china, the crystal, silverware, flowers in the middle. But the thing that she really, really couldn't understand and couldn't believe, we have table manners and we know how to use our fork and knife, honestly. I can't believe, I can't fathom how can people be really that uninformed. I am used to diversity. I was always mixing since my school was also a big, wonderful school. Not to brag, but I had an Olympic size swimming pool. 
a wonderful school, but it was lots of diversity. And I was lucky, I traveled to many places around the world. So I enjoy diversity, I love talking to different people, I like tasting different food and speaking of that. While working on my master's, we went to a study tour in Singapore. And there we were offered to so many nice different Asian cuisine. But my two colleagues would only eat hamburger, french fries, pizza, and drink coke. I went once to do a presentation at one of the suburb schools. And when I went there, it's a middle school, the kids were all white and bragging about it. So I left what I was talking about and I kept on telling them, you can't imagine when you have diverse friends, you'll have a wealth of information, you will know a lot, this is how I was brought up. And the kids really liked what I was talking about. And then they wrote me thank you cards. And this card really stood out. He said, dear Maha, you're so cool. I learned a lot from you. From now on, I will never judge a Mexican person, or a black person, or a Maha person. <laughs> so I have my own clan now. <laughs> Let's talk about Lima's population. 38,000, 70 white, 30 people of color, 2% born 25% in poverty, 11 college. So this TED talk and many presentations that I did among the years and do is to hopefully ask people to be more open and embrace, embrace diversity. Also try to correct the misconception that many people have. And hopefully, when this happened in many small towns in the United States, the United States will be a utopia, honestly. Um, I went to apply for a job, and I really have quite an interesting resume. I worked in many places around the world. So I'm gladly giving my resume to the gentleman who's interviewing, and he says, hmm, you're from Egypt. I hope you didn't get your country problems with you. And I said, I didn't, because of the reason. And he said, what's that reason, ma'am? I said, the United States has a lot of its own problems. It doesn't need to import other people's problems. <laughs> he said, bingo, I like that. I said, I don't like you. <laughs> he gave me an offer, turned it down. Let me tell you about my background. My, both my parents were college grads, spoke English and French fluent. My dad was an admiral in charge of the Egyptian Navy. Both him and mom were very popular in our community, volunteered a lot with nonprofits, socialized a lot with diverse people, and were wonderful parents. One of the things that I really am proud is that I was treated equally in spite of my gender with my three brothers. I was always told, you can do anything you want. And I was encouraged, whatever you want to do, the sky is the limit. Really appreciate very much my parents. And speaking of my three brothers, they all have PhDs. Also, my late husband who was the reason to bring us to Lima <laughs> and passed away last year. He also has a PhD. And I have one item still in my bucket list. I'd love to work on my PhD in women's studies and diversity, of course. Let me now, let me now brag about my three kids. Mothers always brag, right? My eldest is a doctor, medical doctor, and she lives in North Carolina. She has two boys. Of course, we are old-fashioned. You get married first, and then you have kids. 
And her eldest son is 16, graduated and went to North Carolina State University studying engineering. Of course, all the four grandkids are genius like their ma like the grandma. This time, this grandma, not the other one. <laughs> <laughs> My other daughter is a senior global <clears throat> designer and director in New York City. And then my son is a musician. He had a very famous band. Honestly, it was not only nationwide famous, but in Australia, Japan, and England. I would walk with him in the street in New York and Chicago, and they would stop and say, aren't you Omar from Hit the Lights? And now he owns his own business, a music um, studio here, and it's called Legacy Art. And the only thing that frustrates me about him is that I was known as the Admiral's daughter. Now I am Omar's mom. <laughs> but I want to tell you, Lima changed a lot. When I first moved here, there was only 30 years ago, there was only one foreign doctor. And they would say, he's good, but he's a foreigner. Now they brag, go to Dr. Shaheen, Dr. Shaban, Dr. Madalla, all those names. So really, Lima came a long way. And I want to tell you, I really, really love Lima. Lima is a great place to bring up kids, caring community, wonderful neighbors, have lovely friends. Many of them are here today. Um, neighbors are amazing. Anytime you need something, helping hand. When my husband passed away, we had a memorial at Ohio State University, starting from the mayor, the dean. We had like 150 people. And this is how my girls said, Mom, we thought that once dad passed away, you're going to be moving. But we see how people love you here. And I love them. Lima is a great place to live in. We have a great art center, a great symphony. I am really, really, I love I'm a fan of back eyes. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, I forgot that. I have to say that. Uh, seven years ago, I started an interfaith group. And it was great because we all discover that, honestly, our differences, no matter what language or different rituals or something, we all have a lot in common. And that is really important. And Two weeks ago, I had an event here. You might have read about it or attended. I don't know. But it was great because when we started seven years ago, we only had three religions. And the last one, we had 12 religions, faith, denomination. It was really amazing. And I am now a very proud Lima Bee. Thank you.